If you spend all your time doing inventory on what you lost, you will never count up what you have left. Your future is never predicated on what you lost. It's predicated on what you have left. What you have left is enough to build something greater than where you are. And you have all the rich experiences that come through the atrocities you survived. You're stronger, you're wiser. You've proven things to yourself that you couldn't have learned any other way, that you could overcome everything that happened to you. So start looking ahead. Nobody drives forward looking in the rear view mirror. Understanding that and, and surging ahead with what you have been given and to appreciate time. I have a work ethic that they say is incredible. I mean, I can hang with the best of them when it comes to doing what has to be done. But I, I got it from watching my father well and then sick. He, he kept going, he kept moving, he kept producing all the way out. Work ceases to be work when you start to love it. When you love what you do, when you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. So you, you love it, that doesn't mean you don't get tired, that doesn't mean you shouldn't take vacations, that doesn't mean you shouldn't have self-care, all that. But self-care only has so much. After a while, you get tired of that sand on your back and you say, okay, I gotta, I gotta do something. Because we were made to be productive and creative and resourceful. And I wanna tell every entrepreneur listening at me, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And if you don't succeed that time, try, try again. And if you don't succeed that time, try, try again. And if you don't succeed that time, write a book about what you learn from how you fail. There's always something to do with what you have experienced. My legacy is pouring whatever I experienced into who's listening. That is, that is my legacy. That's proof that I was here. If, 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 if at the end of this interview and the end of reading my book, I added something to your life that made you build a table out of a tree, then I built it too. Then whenever anybody asks you about the table, you'll tell them about this guy you met in the interview. You know, that, that's how we have survived for centuries. That's how my people withstood slavery and the atrocities of our lives. Because in the midst of all of the horrendous things we experienced, we still clapped our hands and we still sang our songs and we still managed to be creative and we are still here. So, so don't tell me about trouble through, through hangman nooses and rapes and burnings and killings. We sang. And, and my legacy is, is that you dance and sing and survive and, and do something. I'm not saying that you won't have opposition and trouble and tears. I don't have to write about that. That will find you on its own. Agony will always find you on its own. It's ecstasy that has to be, has to have your address on it. So I'm sending you the potential to, to go beyond agony to the ecstasy of fulfilling everything you were created to be. And that's my legacy. It's in the people that heard me and read my books and saw my movies and traveled around the world with me. Uh, it's in my children. I'm, when I'm writing, I'm actually imagining that I'm having this conversation. And my book reads like I'm talking, uh, like I'm talking to you. And you know that from reading it, it sounds like we're having a conversation with a friend. I'm actually talking to you. I'm through the book. I didn't drop the mic and don't you drop it either. And something of what I said will make it into your book. And something of what you said will make it into the book of the person who read it. And that's how we have progressed for centuries and eons and millenniums because we passed the mic, we didn't drop it. If you lose your ability to hear, eventually it will affect your ability to speak. 
because there is a correlation between what the ear hears and what the mouth articulates. On the impetus of that ideology comes this tremendous premise of listening. Every great orator is a great listener. And I think we have lost not our ability to speak, not yet, but we have lost our ability to listen. Because the only thing we do is pause while we formulate our next approach to attack. And that's not listening, uh, that's strategizing. But if we actually take the time to listen, most of us all want the same things. Most of us want to be loved. Most of us want to be appreciated. Most of us want to be accepted, flaws and all. Most of us, if we have children, want what's best for our children. Most of us are scared. Most of us are anxious and are worried. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we communicate? We're, we're better together than we are apart. And we don't have to agree about everything. But in the process of meeting, I found it's hard to hate somebody you understand. And in the process of meeting, your perspectives broaden, sometimes to the point that you are ejected from the tribe because people who are not exposed are intimidated by people who are exposed. But people who are exposed, it's worth it to lose the sanctity of your citizenship and the tribe of how you describe yourself to enter into the broader world of a human experience before you die. I would hate to die in a zip code having never left the neighborhood that I was born in mentally uh, and not experience the world, the world, France and Ethiopia and Australia and millennials and boomers and Gen Xers. There's something to be learned and people of faith and people not of faith. We, we need to communicate to survive as a species. If you're gonna be successful in business today, you cannot build your business around people like you. You have to build your business in a very broad, eclectic way because the world is becoming broad and eclectic and a narrow mind also causes you to be less successful at the end of your career because your niche market, marketing, an item that could have a broad appeal if you didn't think within the prison of your own experiences.